Hey, welcome back to the channel. I have another important golf ball review for you today. It's one of the most requested I've ever had. Um, I reviewed the V2 a while back and it was one of my most successful videos. Uh, so of course I'm talking about the Kirkland Signature Performance Plus version three for the 2023 season. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room here. This is all a golf ball that we're all rooting for. We all want this golf ball to be very, very successful, and that's because of the price point. It is $35 for two dozen golf balls, and that's essentially about $17.50 a, uh, a dozen, or 50, yeah, so, excuse me, $17.50 a dozen, and with that kind of price point, you might be thinking, yeah, a little two-piece golf ball action, I am No, three-piece urethane coated golf ball for $17.50 a dozen. As far as value goes, there's not much on the market that's better than that. I mean, I, there, I haven't tested any for sure. I mean, that's just an incredible value. Uh, when I tested the V2, for the most part, it was a great golf ball. It performed really well off the 9-iron, the 7-iron, uh, the 5 hybrid. Once I got to the driver, it was just okay. Um, overall, it was one of those golf balls where I said, hey, the performance is all right, but for the price point, you just can't beat it. If you're gonna lose a lot of them, the value is just incredible, right? Uh, so with this one, hopefully it's gotten a little better. Hopefully maybe they've ironed out that driver number and maybe they've built on what they had and maybe we can get to a near perfect performance. And then at that point, this could be the undisputed champ. So let's go ahead and get into the design of the golf ball here. Now I talked about it on my V2 a little bit. So if you haven't seen that one, um, I'm not a big fan of Kirkland's logo. It feels grocery store. It feels kind of corny to me, but whatever it is what it is. I'm disappointed that they didn't do more to the alignment tool there. If you look on the, the side for the alignment tool, they did add those couple arrows there. That's how you can identify essentially that this is the V3 because the two arrows on each side. Um, but I don't like the font. It's really small. It's almost impossible to line your golf ball up. So if you're like me and you're someone who uses the alignment tool, it, it's not that great. I wish they would have improved on that a little more. It's such a subtle thing that you can do, but overall, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Now feeling the urethane coating, this doesn't feel as good as the other one felt. The V2 had a pretty decent, it wasn't like amazing, but it had like a decent urethane coating on there. Obviously they got to cut costs somewhere. I know that they can't just, you know, go all out. You got to save money somehow with a price point like that. But boy, this one feels really, really thin. It actually feels like maybe it wouldn't hold up as much, but we'll test that later. Um, so overall design wise, not bad. I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's really inexpensive, especially for what you're getting. So let's go ahead and get into the performance of the golf ball and let's see how it does there. Let's get out to the chipping and putting green and let's see what the buzz is about out there. All right, so out on the chipping and putting green with the Kirkland Signature Plus V3 model, and I gotta say, I'm a little confused. Um, I tested the V2 earlier this year, and uh, it was actually a pretty decent performer around the green. It had a soft, squishy feel. It had a good amount of spin, actually. I was really impressed for the price point, how much spin it had. Uh, Putter-wise, everything was, it checked all the boxes, really. I didn't have any major issues with it. Uh, but coming out here, there was a couple things I noticed different. The first thing I noticed is how firm the golf ball is. It's very firm. It has a loud click. It's not, uh, it's not that whisper click I really like. It's pretty loud and obnoxious. It actually, when I first heard it, it threw me for a loop, um, which I thought immediately, okay, maybe it's got a little more spin for being a little firmer. No, not the case, actually. It has been a step down. There isn't as much spin as the V2. Um, don't get me wrong, there's still spin. It's not bad, and especially for the price point, it's not bad. Uh, but this is nowhere near what that V2 was, which is gonna be disappointing to a lot of people, I think. I was able to get the ball to go slightly left or right, depending on how I actually, you know, tried to put a cut on it or tried to close the face a little. Uh, but again, you know, three-piece urethane golf ball, what I got from the V2, I just expected more, and I just wasn't getting that. I was getting just an okay amount of spin, nothing spectacular, mediocre. Then moving into the putter again, I'm really disappointed. Now off the top of my head, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember how the V2 was off the putter. I test a lot of golf balls. Um, but as far as this one goes, there is no true roll to be had. Um, both whether using a mallet putter or using a bladed putter, um, the golf ball almost, almost at first has that chug effect where it kind of comes off and then stops and then rolls. Um, I tried a bunch of different ways. I tried decreasing my loft on my putter, tried putting in a couple different styles, and really just couldn't get the ball to roll true at all. I would say it's like a six out of 10, which normally, you know, 99% of golf balls I test are either a nine or a 10 out of 10 on roll. This one is one of the lesser ones I've tested. So very disappointing there. I hope that the numbers aren't uh, as disappointing as this, but I was definitely surprised by this. All right, so 
here's the thing. So I want to I want to address the feel of this golf ball real quick. Uh, and normally I wouldn't spend as much time on this, so I sorry I'm sorry if I drag on. But I feel like with this golf ball, it's really important because a lot of people want to know about this review. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I hit this golf ball was it felt a little firm. Like it felt really firm, and I thought. Well, well, that ain't right. I was like, I remember the V2 being kind of a soft golf ball. It felt pretty soft for the most part. Maybe maybe a little press in there, but uh, nowhere near this. And I thought, well, okay, maybe it's just this one. So I grabbed another one and hit it, and no, it felt firm again. And so then I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm misremembering the V2. And so I grabbed a V2 and put it down, and no, it felt really soft. And so my first initial thought was, well, wait, why does it feel so firm? I hope they didn't firm it up. And that unfortunately is the case here. It, it feels very, very firm compared to previous model golf balls, especially previous of the the the, the, Kirkland, uh, the Kirkland Signature, excuse me. Um, but yeah, it, it's a very firm golf ball, and that kind of worries me a little bit because my last few reviews have been on golf balls that have been a little firmer. And what happens is, is when you have an average to fast swing speed, I swing 92, 93 mile an hour with the driver, which is average for a male in the world. I've noticed that the firmer golf balls just don't compress as well throughout the whole bag. With the driver and the hybrids and the mid irons, they compress pretty well for the most part, but then once you get to like the eight, the nine, the short, the wedges, you end up losing distance and losing spin because you're just not compressing it as well. Uh, so I hope that's not the case here, but let's look at the numbers and let's see exactly how we did. We're gonna start out with the nine iron as always, um, and 87 mile per hour speed is exactly what I was afraid of and what I was hoping would not happen. Goodness, that is just so unfortunate. 120, I lost about five yards. 118.8, which, um, yeah, I lost about seven yards there. 26 on the launch, which is very, very high. Um, that's not a great start. And again, it's just, I had that feeling. As soon as I felt the golf ball, I thought, man, I just... I just, I, I was nervous about that. So maybe with the seven iron, it will get a little better. Let's find out. Um, 6,138 with the seven iron spin. Uh, that's below average, unfortunately. And that's actually well below, um, you know, I'm going to show as well the V2 just to kind of show you here. But the V2 actually had 7,187, that seven iron spin, which don't get me wrong, that was probably a little too much. But now we've gone from one extreme to the other. We've gone from, and that's that's the difference between that compression I was just telling you about. The softer V2 was compressing really well, and I was getting over 7,000 RPM with a seven iron. That was like the highest I'd ever tested, one of the highest. And now, because it's a lot firmer, I'm just not compressing it, and now I'm getting below average spin where yeah, it'll kind of stick a green, but not as well as I'd like it to. And then continuing with the 7 iron, 105.4, um, that's pretty low, 159.6, 147.6, uh, 17.3 is the 7 iron launch, which that's actually really low compared. I, man, that's just really disappointing throughout the whole thing. I'm going to wait till the end here, and I'm going to show you the differences in full between the V2 and the V3. Uh, because it looks like some serious changes were made, and at this point, I don't know if they were for the better. I really hope that we can have some better success with the 5 hybrid and the driver. Let's hope so. 5 hybrid spin is 3,374, which is almost comical, to be honest with you. That's almost like a clown number, because my average is 4,115, and, you know, sometimes I'll get 38, sometimes I'll get 39. Those are low numbers for me, but 3,374... I could hit the front of the green and it isn't stopping. It's going to roll to the back of the green. So I now have to play this golf ball two, three yards on the fringe and let it roll up onto the green, which is just really unacceptable. Um, and again, I'll, I'll go back and show you the difference between uh, the V2 and the V3 in a moment, but not happy with that. 116.6 uh, is kind of average. 191.4 average. 177 average. 12.4 is really low on that launch angle. Um, all, all those numbers, you know, what, what really hurts it there is low launch angle, could not get the ball in the air, and then really low spin, just not great. I might not have been striking it perfectly, but at least the numbers are okay there. At least we're kind of getting on the right track. Hopefully the driver comes in and saves it. 2,997 on your driver spin, which is slightly above average. 241.1, which I lost a little bit of distance, 131, lost a ton of speed, 219.5, lost 16.6, uh, that's a really, really high launch. So now we have a lot of this. We have a lot of like it launches really low here and then really high here and high here and mid there. It's just so inconsistent. That is really, really disappointing. Um, 
yeah, yeah, that, that's just really disappointing. Okay, so in this next segment, I normally don't do this, but I do feel it's important. I feel it's important for this specific video. Um, you can skip ahead. I have the chapters down below. I put a, another one in. I'm going to now talk about the differences between the V2 and the V3. Now, keep in mind, the V2 was reviewed earlier this year. We're not talking last year, the year before. You know, I, this is a fresh review only nine months ago, which is not that long ago. Uh, of the V2, I'm going to show these. If you don't, you can just skip to the conclusion or the durability is going to be the next chapter. But I, I feel this is important here to kind of show you why I'm disappointed in these numbers so much. Okay, so the differences between the V2 and the uh, the V3 now with the Kirkland signature. Um, let's start off with the 9 iron here and just kind of show the differences. So I got 87 mile an hour with the V3, but 92.5. So you can see, I mean, five and a half mile an hour differences. Uh, I actually gained a little bit of distance there, as you can see, with the 9 iron on the V2. And it launched pretty darn high. Um, but again, that's right in line with what the V3 did. They actually have a very similar launch angle. So again, the V2 was so much better on the 9 iron. I compressed it so much better. Then getting into the 7 iron numbers here, you can see the difference. So immediately that spin is the biggest one. 7,187 compared to 6,138. That's a thousand RPM difference. I mean, that's huge. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know one of the biggest complaints about the V2 was a lot of people were saying, hey, it spins too much. I, it spins way too much. It's very spinny. Um, and, and there was a lot of complaints. And I, I credit Kirkland for trying to tailor to that and say, hey, we hear you. We're going to you know, change that. But not to that extreme. You know, 6,500, 6,600 would have been a great compromise there. Um, as you can see there with the ball, you know, speed, much better on the V2. Distance-wise, better with the V2. And then the launch angle with the 7 iron was actually 20.2. It was very, very high, whereas the V3 is actually going pretty low for me. Um, so a, a, a big difference there, and that could be why you're seeing some distance differences as well. So one thing you'll notice is that the, uh, the, the V2 actually is lower on your distance than compared to the V3, but that's because there's so much spin with the V2, and it launched really high at the 20.2, whereas 17.3 is the V3. So because it launched so much higher and it had so much spin, it did lose a little bit of distance, but man, that's some stopping power. I really do feel like if it had just been in the middle there, it would have been a healthy balance. Um, I also do like the fact that the V2 launched higher opposed to lower. I hate when golf balls launch low, especially for a mid to, mid to fast swinger, because you do lose distance that way. Uh, once you get really, really fast, then low launch is what you want. But until then, you really want that air. And then, as you can see, getting into the five hybrid, you know, 4200 spin compared to the 3374. Again, it was almost a thousand RPM difference. I mean, guys, there's just nothing I can do with the 3374. It's so bad. The, the V2 was so much better with that 4207. Uh, 119.2 mile an hour ball speed compared to 116.6. I mean, there's a huge difference there, four to five yards of difference. Uh, the feel was so much better with the V2. It compressed so much better. Launched at 16, uh, opposed to the 12.4. I don't know what's going on with that low launch. That's two clubs back to back for the V3 that had that low launch. Just really, really good numbers from the V2, where it just feels like the improvements or the differences, I, I put improvements in quotations, uh, from the V3 just really have hurt the golf ball overall. Then, of course, when you get into the, the driver, this is where... Um, you know, I got to give it up for the V3. It did make an improvement with the driver because I lost so much distance with the V2. That's That was really my main knock against the V2. And as you can see, it made vast improvements with that in regards. It had you know, a much higher launch and, and you can tell they tried, but I think it just, it, it's too much extremism. It just went too far. There was a middle ground there that I think really would have worked out better. But I do have to give credit to the V3. I did gain like five, six, seven yards with the driver. I actually lost ball speed, excuse me, So, but overall I gained distance, so there is that. I think it was just that low launch angle from the V2 that hurt me. Okay, sorry for the long rant there. I went a little in-depth. I know not all of you love that much in-depth, but I, I just thought I should show those numbers there because, again, I think this is going to be one of my better performing videos, and I want you guys to understand when I get to my conclusion why I reached that conclusion. So let's talk about the durability real quick. 
Um, as you can see from this golf ball, it is pretty beat up. Uh, it's definitely worse than the V2 for sure. There's all kinds of shavings coming off of it, scrapes, scuffs. It feels rough. It feels like it wouldn't last. So 50 to 60 shots is, is going to be about it. Probably you might be able to get a little more if you just hit fairway and grass the whole time. Um, I was hitting it into a net, granted, but still just I think maybe a round at the most is all you're looking at for one of these golf balls, and that's if you don't lose it. All right, so final thoughts. Here's the thing. Um, Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, we all are rooting for this golf ball because of the price point, because of the value. We all want it to work. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's what my channel is centered around. The numbers don't lie. And unfortunately, this is a major step back. It's a major step back. Um, the green side performance was better with the V2. Uh, the feel was much better with the V2. Performance numbers wise, Little bit of an improvement with the driver, which is nice, but everything else, a big, big step back. Uh, did not like the firm, did not like the deadness coming off the club. I felt like I was really having just to put a lot of extra juice on the golf ball. I was getting frustrated, miss hits were punishing. There was no forgiveness because of how firm it was. Um, so the majority of it is just a big, big step back. Now, don't get me wrong, as far as value wise, the value is still there, but as bad as this golf ball performed, I, I, there's a lot of great values out there. If you're new to the channel, check out the channel. I, I've tested a lot of golf balls that are a dollar a piece, a dollar twenty-five a piece, that are light years better than this golf ball. And you might say, well, Nick, but they don't, they don't, uh, they're not three piece. They're not urethane. Yeah, but what does it matter, man? When you're getting, you know, abysmally low spin with the seven iron, when you're getting abysmally low spin with the hybrid, you know, I can tell you the two-piece golf balls I test get more spin than this golf ball. They absolutely do. The numbers don't lie. So, I mean, there are better golf balls out there. I know a lot of you use this golf ball. I know a lot of you love the Kirkland Signature, uh, but the reality is, is that this is a major step back for Kirkland. I do think there is a market here for faster swingers. If you're someone who swings very, very fast, 100 to 105, 110, I think you can compress the golf ball a lot better and it might be for you. But for the average mid handicapper, the guy swinging 90 to 95, even below senior, stuff like that, it's just going to hurt your game. There's just no doubt about it. It's really going to hurt your game, and I'm, I'm overall really disappointed. And again, going back to why I did that comparison, you know, again, that was a, that both these golf balls were tested this year, and the V2 was just by far the better performer, and it wasn't close. So I think it is a step back. It's unfortunate. Hopefully, maybe, you know, when Kirkland comes out with the V4, it might be a little bit better. I hope that their direction, their heading, isn't toward faster swingers because that would be pretty disappointing. Overall, it, it hurts. It's heart. It's a heartbreaker. We all want this golf ball to succeed, but unfortunately it is a big step back. It is what it is. But if you want to know a golf ball that is really good to play, you can check out some of my reviews. Guys, I have some top fives in there as well. You can go to my channel and search top fives. There have been tons of two-piece really good value golf balls that I have tested. Go ahead and watch the videos, find out. You're welcome to ask me in the comments what you would recommend. Tell me your swing speed. I have a Facebook group also called the Golf Ball Addicts. You're welcome to go on there as well and ask me, hey, this is my swing speed. What do you think I should try? I, I was a big Kirkland player, but now I don't like the V3. You're more than welcome to go on there and ask me. I do have golf ball recommendations for you that I can give you. So if not all hope is lost, there is still some hope out there for saving a lot of money and having a really good performance. So as always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning. Until next time, thank you so much.